Well, good morning, everyone. It is July 14th, and it's 5.30 in the morning. It's been a couple of weeks since I've uh, posted the video. A lot of things have, have happened you know, just at work and, and home. I really haven't had the time. But today, it's going to be a pretty fun day. There's a lot of things that I need to get done. I didn't have a chance Wednesday because there were some... Um, there were some visitors who were doing some, some work on the farm and we really couldn't do any beekeeping that day. So today is uh, Friday, which is uh, here in Israel is equivalent to Saturday, kind of a day off uh, uh, before the big you know day of rest, uh, which is Saturday. Uh, so uh, I'd like to do as much as I can this morning so that I can have the afternoon with, with the family and, and cooking and whatnot. So today we're going to look at three colonies. Two were created and one was a captured swarm from somewhat late spring, early summer. And these three colonies give us a really good opportunity to look at uh, different methods of queen rearing. And to be honest, uh, if you want to look at it as different ways to, to split, to for expansion of the apiary. I didn't uh, intend to expand the apiary. I wanted to create, uh, more as an experiment, a couple of new queens to see if they did well, uh, because I have two hives that I'd like to requeen. So today I wanted to discuss three different um, methods, if you will, or three different um, occurrences uh, of, of how we uh, Potentially, we'll take a look, got a new queen, and we're just going to examine them and walk through them and, and see which one yielded the best results. So we've got number one, which is going to be a walkaway split. We've got number two, which is going to be a vertical or double screen split. And we've got number three, which is going to be a, uh, a, a, a colony requeening themselves. So we're going to see which one had success, which queens went out and got mated, came back and laid eggs. It's been uh, right at it's been 30 days. So we should be able to see eggs today. So we'll go ahead and, and walk through those and look at the results. So the double screen board method that we use is a little bit different than what most people use. Typically you would make sure the queen is in the, the top box, two box setup, the top box. Uh, so that any of the field bees that are in that setup fly out and return back to the uh, to the, the the I guess the new queenless box that has the eggs, the food, the larva, uh, the the pollen, uh, the honey, the larvae, everything ready to to make a new queen. And then that will ultimately leave the queen in the top box with a smaller population, but that's okay because she's laying, and she'll build up very quickly. That bottom box will have uh, older worker bees, bees that are bringing in pollen, bees that are bringing in nectar. Uh, and if they need to, they can revert back to nurse bees or different tasks. You have bees that um, are going to be nurse bees, bees that are going to be uh, you know, wax building bees, just different levels of bees. Because you're going to go uh, you know, 40, 40, about 45 days or so before the new any new bees are, are, are uh, hatched because the queen has to be produced, the queen has to mate, the queen has to lay eggs, that brood has to come out. I did it a little differently <clears throat> because, uh, and I, I put the queen in the bottom box, made sure she had a big population. I did that because this was an experiment and I didn't know if there were drones in there. I didn't know if, um, you know, this time of year we have migratory birds, if they would, uh, you know, eat these bees. We have lizards that'll eat bees as they fly. I didn't know, so I wanted to make sure that I had a, I had an, enough. I had a, enough of a population, but I wanted to make sure I wouldn't lose as many bees um, if this failed. I wanted to make sure that if they went uh, laying worker, if I was not able to to get back to them in time because my time is limited. Uh, that, you know, if they were a complete loss, it wouldn't be as many bees. The walkaway split, 
as a, I have a six frame nuke. It's the only nuke I have right now. So I made sure to put in plenty of pollen, plenty of honey. They're on a flow right now with cotton. They were on a flow earlier when I, when I did this, um, and about a month ago. So, um, we'll go ahead and, and take a look. It was a very traditional split with a walk away element. So I made sure there were eggs and, and larvae. The other one, like I said, was a swarm and they were fairly late in the season. It was not a virgin. It wasn't a, you know, an after swarm. It was a mated queen. They came in, they were very small when they came in. They actually came in on, um, I, I remember they came in on Shabbat into one of our, uh, on the Sabbath onto one of our um, uh, bait hives. So I really couldn't do anything with them th that day. And they were laying, they were doing okay, but they never quite seemed to build up the way they should have. I fed them, I did, you know, they, they, we had a, a, a nice little flow. And uh, the, the brood pattern initially looked wonderful. And then after that, it didn't look very good. And I went in the, at the same time that I was checking the splits and I noticed that they had cells. I believe they're emergency cells. At the time, I thought maybe supersedure, but there were so many of them and they were in a cluster. I think they were emergency cells. So we'll go ahead and take a look at that hive today also. Okay, here we are at the six frame nuke walk away split. We're gonna crack the lid, take a look and see, uh, see how the bees are doing. So let's grab the smoker give them a little smoke not much just let them know we're, we're here let them know something's up <clears throat> problem with this nuke design um, is when they propolize that top down especially when it's in the morning like this it's really hard so I'm going to go ahead and uh, come stop recording now and, and uh, once I find what I need to find I'll come back and record. okay we've got the lid off and you can see one two three four five at least five and a half maybe six frames of bees so we loaded this thing up with plenty of nurse bees plenty of emerging brood and plenty of eggs that went on to to hatch so I think this nuke was done right for a walk away split you know um, people often say that <coughs> walk away splits are inferior I think walk away splits are probably inferiorly done so let's go through here <coughs> and look for the queen if there is one or look for evidence of the queen and see what we find and there she is there's our queen brand new so let me go ahead and try to get her marked I don't want her to fall off the edge here. Let me get her marker. All right, off she goes. Back to the hive. All right, so two things. One, we know we have a laying queen. And the other thing is, it's really cool to see the, the brood and other resources here near the entrance. And but if you go back here, you see honey. And that's really what's observed in a lot of the literature and also uh, some other YouTubers uh, like Mr. Ed, who's done a lot of cutouts, has observed. So uh, that's pretty pretty interesting to see. All right, I have number nine. This was the the late spring, early summer swarm that has uh, is a, seems to be attempting to requeen themselves, or the queen was somehow lost. You can see. I don't know if you could see that, um, but a bee just flew in with pollen on its baskets. It is about six in the morning, so that means it's either the uh, it found some pumpkin or squash or something like that, or the, in the field next to the apiary, there are some, I believe it's chicory. It only blooms in the morning, very early morning. So let's take a look. Okay, you can see it again. Capped brood. We've got some very young larvae, some older larvae here. I hope this focuses. I don't see any eggs, but um, maybe I will in post closer view. But also we've got, um, <clears throat> yep, eggs right there. Okay, so we have a queen in here. We've had a queen in here for a little while. Again, I don't really know when 
they went queenless. I don't know. I saw a cell, but it could have been any anywhere along its journey. So this hive is not going to be necessarily on the same calendar as the other ones. Question is, do I need to find her and mark her? Eh, we'll see. There she is. Much, much bigger <clears throat> than the last queen. I don't know if that's because they made her. If it's genetics, the cells looked exactly the same. Pretty much emergency cells. Uh, so we'll see. The other queen seemed to be a little bit more prolific than this one to, just by looking at the pattern. Let me go ahead and mark her. You know, I, I have marked different ways. Marked in my hand, marked uh, on the run. Uh, and this thing, the only thing with this thing, I'm a little scared that that little uh, trap door, that little gate might injure her leg or, or wing or something. But honestly, um, when you're recording by yourself, you don't have a tripod or, um, you know, you really just want to hold the queen while she, while the paint dries. This is a really nice, uh, little tool. Uh, it's not the real one. It's some cheap Chinese knockoff. It's already broken a bit, but, um, we'll go ahead and get her marked and get her back in. And here we are finally to the double screen board vertical split. Let's have a look and, and see if that queen came back. Even if the queen didn't come back, um, I've got two hives with that are queen right uh, that I can fold these bees back into. I could also shake them down into their original colony and they would do just fine. So let's take a quick look. Okay, I just opened up this hive and this... They are not from an aggressive hive originally, but you can just hear them. I'm going to lean in. I mean, they're just, they're roaring. And you can look here um, at the entrance, uh, the bees that have flown off and are trying to come back. And they're just, you know, they're really uh, angry. And, and I have a feeling that they will not be queen right. But let's take a look and see. Well, here we go. I was wrong. We've got capped brood. We've got larvae. These bees are awful jittery. I think I'm looking at the, the hive. I think they're just they they are just packed full and need another box. Um, I don't know why that'd make them aggressive though. Maybe the genetics are just off. Maybe they're just aggressive. So let's keep going. Uh, I may be wrong about them being aggressive. It is kind of early in the morning and um, they may just be letting me know not to come to their house that early. Uh, so let's take a look, see if we can find that queen. Well, as you can see, got a queen. She's made it and they have accepted her. These are older bees by now, so I can't really chalk up any of their aggression to um, their genetics or her genetics, to be honest with you. You know, she has none of her bees have hatched out. And again, these are older bees who are um, <clears throat> on a f they're, they're on a flow right now. And it's early in the morning. They're probably not too happy with me messing with them. The parent colony they came from were not at all aggressive. So we'll just have to see what happens. They've been a very productive colony. This one is also productive. A little bit of propolisy, but uh, they, they lay up they lay up honey really really quickly. So hopefully her colony. Will I think be it's time to go ahead and move that uh, that vertical split off onto their own bottom board, and I've got. Honestly, that box is full and they're getting kind of honey bound. So I'm going to go ahead and put a, a second box on there that uh, I have another resource hive drawing out. I hope they drew out enough comb. I haven't checked on that in a couple of weeks. So let's go ahead and, and get these guys moved. I figured it'd be kind of nice for you guys to see me try to do this on a very uneven ground. A lot of loose rocks and gravel and a smoker that uh, is trying to go out on me. Either I'm going to get stung a lot or I'm going to fall. Well, this is going to go great. We'll take a look. 
All right, I'm doing that thing you're not really supposed to do. Standing right in front of the entrance. Oh, and both colonies are hopping. All right, so let's let's see what happens here. Okay, so let's let's go ahead and take a look at this double screen bottom. Make sure the queen's not on here. But it did be there. That's fun. I don't see the queen. I don't know, or evidence thereof. No retinue. All right. So let's go ahead and remove this. You know, all these bees are going to come back to this location. They're going to try to get into their hive. Eventually they'll figure out that it's this bottom one over here. So, question is, do I make a little gap so that those foragers will come back to this hive. I'm worried if I do that, that it will really just be too much, that it will uh, drain this other hive. I think I'm gonna go ahead and just button them up into this hive, the, the new hive, and put a second box on that. And maybe, um, I don't know, maybe I'll, I'll put an upper entrance on that or a double screen, put the double screen board inverted on top of that. Well, here they are. This was the double screen board split, <clears throat> and they're, um, some of them are leaving out of the bottom like they're used to, but the vast majority of them are coming back to the top. I put a little twig there. Let's see if I can zoom in a little so you can see it. A little twig there to make the, uh, make uh, uh, an entrance about where it used to be. They're still trying to move on back to where the entrance was about, well, 20 something inches behind them. It's less than a meter, they'll figure it out soon. All right, uh, I'm soaking wet, it's, it's a bit warm. It's in the, it's like 28 degrees uh, Celsius, which is mid 80s, I believe, Fahrenheit. It's um, 8.30 in the morning. The humidity is 70 something percent. Reminds me a lot of uh, Louisiana in that regard, except there are a few differences between central Israel and Louisiana. Let's go ahead and recap. So three out of three success. The, the queen that's died one way or the other, the, the beast requeened uh, quite well the walkaway split uh, in the six frame newt they requeened um, the, she's laying doing well already has capped brood and the um, vertical double screen split also mated out of all of them i am probably the most worried about the vertical double screen i don't know why it's a gut feeling um, but uh, you know, this is uh, animal husbandry, a little bit of art, a whole lot of science. So gut feelings only go so far. I, I think the well done walk away is just the way to go for me. Um, the I think I may keep the screen boards just for like overwintering nukes or uh, for helping with smaller colonies. I may do some splits with them. If you do it a certain way, you really can have some success with them. But for my schedule, my inability to come back three days later or four days later, two, you know, the, the walk away, the well done, well fed, well done walk away split in, um, in, a, in a nuke is, is a really nice method for me. I may change my tune. I'm sure I will. But for now, that's the method I like. Um, I think I'm going to wrap it up and head home and then have the rest of the day with the family and cook for the weekend and um, relax.
I'm sure I won't relax. I'm not very good at relaxing. I'll find something to do. All right. Have a good weekend. Take care. Bye.